Hello, science students. We're here at a geothermal vent in northern Iceland. Um, this smoke you see coming out of here is actually not smoke, but steam. Uh, below us, there's liquid hot magma that is superheating water. That's coming up in various different forms. Right here, it's coming up as steam. Just over there, it's coming up as boiling hot springs. And there's also bubbling mud everywhere. So it's a pretty unique place. When we live in the Appalachian Mountains, you know, we live in the oldest mountains on Earth. We don't usually think of the Earth as continually forming. But as you explore the Earth, you'll find places like Iceland that are only 17 million years old. They're forming every day, new magma is coming out, lava is cooling, forming new Earth. And when we think about our mountains, you know, they're a billion years old. We think of them as constantly eroding. But all around the earth, it's changing, sometimes growing, sometimes eroding. So really unique place to be right now and hot and steamy. And what makes this park so unique to scientists is that we are actually standing in the Mid-Atlantic Rift. And if you remember how we studied geology and the theory of tectonic plates, giant plates are floating on top of liquid hot magma. Right here, however, we have two plates that are starting to pull apart. On my right hand side, we have the North American plate. On my left hand side, we have the European plate. And they are slowly tearing apart and that is what creates such dramatic volcanoes and hot springs and geysers and hot pots here in Iceland. It is a very geologically unstable place. Now All of this geothermal instability creates large and impressive hot springs all over Iceland. Here we are enjoying one of the most famous, the Blue Lagoon in Reykjavik, the capital. Iceland, we're at what's called the Blue Lagoon and it's famous for being these amazing hot springs where people are allowed to swim in but that's not the main purpose is actually the hot water is a byproduct from a power plant you see behind me and the unique thing is the scientists have figured out by studying geology that there are pockets of hot water trapped below the earth they're being heated by liquid hot magma and what they've done, the engineers have figured out how to bring that water up to the surface in order to make electricity. So 99% of Iceland's electricity comes from these geothermal power plants. And um, on top of that, it makes a pretty cool place to come and enjoy the amazing hot healing waters of a hot spring.
The first step in making electricity in a geothermal power plant is to drill a hole down to where the superheated water is. Step two is to bring that hot water up and let it release as steam. The steam then turns a turbine and you can see in step three that that turbine will spin a magnet in a generator making an electrical current. That electricity can then be put on the grid and brought to people's houses and businesses and schools. Uh, the water can then head to a cooling tower where it can cool down and then be either pumped back into the earth via the injection well in step five or in the case of the Blue Lagoon, pumped out into a giant swimming pool for all to enjoy. So geothermal electrical energy production probably isn't for everyone in every situation. However, if you have access to extremely hot water heated by the earth, it's an absolutely amazing and clean source of renewable energy. There is another way to capture energy from the earth, and that's what we'll be looking at next. It's known as a geothermal heat pump. If you've ever been in a cave, you'll understand how a geothermal heat pump works. When you go into a cave in the summertime, it feels nice and cool. If you go into a cave in the wintertime, it often feels warmer in there than the surrounding air. This is because the temperature of the earth is generally between 50 and 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So in a geothermal heat pump, Water or a refrigerator moves through a loop of pipes. When the weather is cold, the water or refrigerant heats up as it travels through the part of the loop that's buried underground. Once it gets back above ground, the warmed water or refrigerant transfers heat into the building. The water or refrigerant cools down after its heat is transferred. It is then pumped back underground where it heats up once more, starting the process again. On a hot day, the system can run in reverse. The water or refrigerant cools the building and then is pumped underground where extra heat is transferred to the ground around the pipes. The great thing about geothermal heat pumps as opposed to a geothermal power plant is you don't need to be near liquid hot magma or a geothermal hotspot. Anybody in North America could install one of these and save an enormous amount of energy and money heating and cooling their home. <laughs>